the second example is on a patient who is 60 years old and she uh, presented with, uh, she has a history of rheumatoid arthritis and came in with upper neck pain. You know, so, you know that's, the history is important. You know, when you see a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, we know that rheumatoid arthritis has manifestations involving uh, the um, uh, cervical spine, uh, you know, because it's a synovitis that can cause inflammation of any synovial joint. And not uncommonly, uh, the cervical spine is a, is a site of involvement of rheumatoid arthritis. So she, this patient comes in with a six month history of severe neck pain. Her neurological exam was normal. You get this um, MRI of the cervical spine, and this is an extension, and that's flexion. And uh, you look at it, and you know, with experience, you'll be you can capture these pathologies. You can see here C1 is uh, anteriorly translated inflection and goes where it's supposed to be an extension. It, uh, it, it, um, reduces an extension. So this extra motion of C1 over C2 explains her neck pain. And we call this Atlanto Atlas axial axis C1 over C2, Atlanto axial instability. Up to 20% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis will have uh, this pathology. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times it's asymptomatic. Sometimes it's symptomatic. And then sometimes if the subluxation is significant and can cause uh, spinal cord uh, compression did a case yesterday or a couple of days ago um, on, on a patient uh, with rheumatoid who came in with atlanta axial instability and myelopathy because the ventral subluxation can cause dynamic compression on the spinal cord. When she flexes her neck, the canal will be reduced. When she extends her neck or a patient extends her, his or her neck, the canal size will go back to its normal caliber. And that's why some patients would, would have beyond uh, neck pain, uh, neurological uh, complaints and deficits. That's the MR of the cervical spine that uh, shows the canal is wide open. And that's not, unsur not surprising because uh, she doesn't have a deficit, she has neck pain. So in these patients, usually we um, uh, you know, counsel them, we put them in a brace and we you know, treat them symptomatically and we have them see their rheumatologist because they don't have a deficit and see if they can optimize their anti-rheumatic medic, you know, uh, you know, their rheumatoid arthritis medications. And uh, if they fail a non-surgical treatment, especially patients who are, you know, have tried it and been optimized, we may look into uh, fixing this. And the fix is a fusion, a C1, C2 fusion. You can see you put a C1, what we call a lateral mass screw, and then a C2 uh, pars screw to stabilize their necks. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.